Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a guide to customizing your MacBook. Now, there are so many ways you can do this. You can definitely put your own personal touch on it. I'm just gonna give you some guidelines on things that you can customize, settings and things that you can set. So yeah, that is what I'm gonna be covering in today's video. I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. So here you can see my home screen. As you can see, it's a pretty minimal look here. Um, I'm not happy with the lock screen that I have right now. It's a very nice wallpaper. I have it on my phone. I just don't think it works really with this setup that I have going on here. Um, one thing that annoys me so much about macOS is the fact that when you have like a, a lighter background, the text for folders look so stupid as you can see it has that like it's white text with like a very very dark shadow or back behind it so i just wish they made it just black text that would just be so much better but anyway that's enough said let's get started on different ways that you can customize your mac the first thing i'm going to start off with is wallpapers so i have a collection of wallpapers that i like this one is all right i prefer it on my phone um then we also have some ones that i did get from graffiti they did give me um some access to some of their wallpapers which is really nice of them you've probably seen these wallpapers before they're pretty popular um right now this one is definitely my favorite just the plain one i'm gonna go ahead and just set that so you can see what it looks like um, yeah, that is what it looks like. I think it looks really cool. Um, as you can see, this is what I mean with the text. It just looks so much better with a darker-ish background um, that doesn't put a huge drop shadow behind the text. Um, so yeah, wallpapers, I recommend checking out Graffiti. Uh, if you liked the wallpaper that I had the first time, I will put a link to it in the description box below if you want to go download it for yourself. Here you can see I have a few um, wallpapers that I just made. Some of them I made, some of them I got to download. Here's uh, one with the sun. Here's that same sun, but just like with the text with it. Here I have this music collage one that I made. Now, um, yeah, this is definitely based on personal preference, whatever wallpaper you choose. These are just some ones that I'll put in the description box below that you can get for yourself. Um, but I'm gonna just go for the graffiti one for now. I change my wallpaper so often that it's really not like set in stone once I've set one. I just, I change it so often. I always change my mind on this. Now, while we're here with all the Aura wallpapers and things, one thing that you might probably be more familiar with when it comes to the things that Graffiti sell is definitely the Aura clock or the screensaver that you can put on your laptop. So I'm gonna go over to settings here and I'm gonna go to desktop and screensaver. And here you can see I have all my screensavers. So this one is the free one that you probably know. Um, if I can go to preview, this is what it looks like. Um, you probably have seen that before. It's very popular. Um, they do have their plus pack where you can choose which background you want. Um, so you can choose the other colors. They even have a full pack if you wanna go with that. And one of the coolest things they also have is the retro anime clock. Um, so that is um, gonna look like this. This is also really cool. I also have that in my, the background of my videos a lot. So yeah, this is also a very cool one that you can get for yourself. But those are all the screen servers that I have from Graffiti. I also have this one here, which is from Flick low i think that's what it is i'll have a link to the website description um and um this is what it looks like you've probably also seen this one before it's also very popular um i really like this one as well it's very minimal it's just a flip clock um but it has a good cool look to it um and yeah i really like that also while we're on the topic of screen savers and everything i want to introduce you to hot corners so basically you set one of the corners of your macbook to bring up your screensaver so that you just quickly lock basically your computer. Um, so it's really easy to do this. You just go to your desktop and screensaver settings and then um, you go ahead and choose hot corners as you can see here. And then you just choose which one you want. So which corner does what you can set different ones. So this one is going to see, it says start screensaver. You can have it as different things, but yeah, I like to put my top left one as start screensaver. Like I said, you can choose which one you want for different things. This one is quick note. Um, so it's a really nice thing you can do. So you can quickly just go to your screensaver, by just going and putting your cursor right in the corner of the display. So that's also really nice. The next thing you'll probably notice is I did change my folder icons. These icons I got from Apple's app, which is SF Symbols Beta, where you can basically get all of the symbols that they have. I use this a lot in 
um, just anything for my YouTube channel or just making things like this. Um, I love using their symbols just because it's very minimal. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys quickly how you can customize your folder icons. Um, I have another set of the same symbols. I just added like a white background so that it looks like an app icon. So how you do this, there are two ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you each one. Maybe the one works better for you than the other. So I'm going to tap on my folder. I'm going to select it, right click and click on get info. And then you'll see here you have this little icon. Usually if I just create a new folder, it will just have this blue folder icon. But as you can see, I already have it kind of customized. So that's why it looks like that. All you need to do is go to your image that you want to use for an icon. So this is mine. I'm going to click on double click on it to open. Then I'm just going to click on command A, which selects everything and command C, which copies it. And then I'm going to tap on that icon and click on command V to paste it. So then it changes the icon to whatever you've set it to. Another thing that you can also do is you can go ahead and do the same thing. Click right click, click on get info. Instead of opening up your image and copying and everything, you can just drag your image to that icon and that will also change it. I just know some people might have struggled with it not working like that way. Um, so that's also a way that you can just quickly change it. You just drag your image into the folder icon. I'm just gonna quickly change all of these and then I'll get back to you guys. So then this is what it looks like. I really like the kind of 3D effect that it has. If you wanna know how I made this, I basically went into Photoshop and imported an app icon. So this is just an Instagram app icon, which is really good quality. And then I added bevel and emboss to it, which gives it this 3D look, as you can see. So that's with it on or off. And then I just used a clipping mask to add over all my things and put in whatever icon that I wanted to over that. So that is basically how I did that in Photoshop. Just adding a bevel and emboss gives it that cool 3D effect. I will have all of these icons in the description box for you guys to go download for yourself. I'll have these ones and then also just the plain ones if you want those rather. So yeah, all of those will be in the description box below for you guys to go check out. Next up, what I wanna cover is more Mac specific things and settings specifically that you can toggle. So I'm gonna go to settings here and the first thing I want to edit is my dock. So this is my dock. It's actually very busy at the moment. This is what it looks like when I don't have other apps open as well. These are all the apps that I have. I don't like having too many apps in my dock, just the necessary ones. Otherwise, I would just go ahead and get them in the launch pad. But I'm going to go here in settings to dock and menu bar. Now, the first thing that I prefer with a dock is not having it visible all the time. I just bring my cursor down and that will bring up the dock just because I like having this clean look with nothing but my app or my folders on my Mac. So that's just something I prefer if you don't like that you don't have to toggle this um, but basically how you do this is you can just turn on automatically hide and show the dock so if I turn that off it will always be down here um, but yeah I just prefer that to be hidden and then the next thing you can go ahead and turn on is magnification so I would think by default it is turned off which is this one here so now you can see I can just go down here and select my app what I want to choose but if I turn magnification on it will kind of do this little carousel thing where it kind of makes it bigger so you can choose how big you want this to get when you're hovering over the app so this is the biggest and it's quite big um, as you can see this is what it looks like so that's also really cool um, so I like to have that not too much but just a little so that it's kind of magnified um, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with that that's why I also don't like too many things in my dock because the more things you have in your dock, the weirder this magnification kind of looks. So yeah, I really recommend doing the magnification as well because I, I just really like it. So other things that I recommend you take a look at is here in the general settings section. So here at the top, you can toggle on light mode or dark mode. Um, so this is just what that looks like. And also you can have it on auto, which means during the day it would be on light mode, during the night it will be on dark mode. Um, so you can toggle that. I just prefer having mine set on light mode. Um, but then also a big thing you can toggle is accent color. So what this basically does is mine is set to multicolor. So it just depends on basically what you're doing what the accent color will be, what the color is of your background, whatever. And the default color usually here on these little things is blue. But if I change it to say something, say like purple, you can see these things change. If you go to finder also, you'll see this is now purple, where if I go to accent color, it is defaulted on blue. Um, 
You can put it to gray. This is what that looks like. So this really just depends on your personal preference, really. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and adjust that to change it more to your liking as well. So yeah, that's also something that you can change if you want to. But I usually just set mine to accent color as multicolor. But yeah, if there's something you need to do, you can do that. Another thing you can do to customize your Mac is adding widgets. Now, I'm not a big fan of adding widgets on the home screen itself. I know there are apps that allow that, but you have your widgets section here at the top. Um, if you click on here, you can add some widgets. So for widgets, I found um, some cool apps that are also actually on iPhone that I use on my phone. Um, so that would be color widgets and you also have top widgets on here. My favorite is definitely color widgets. So you just go in here and you just set up your widgets however you want them. Here you can see um, they have some that are remain for you. You can even add some images or you can just use the ones that they have here. Um, so yeah, it's really customizable and you just set it up like you would on your iPhone setting up widgets. And then all you need to do is you go to your widget section here and click on edit widgets. And then you see you have all of these things and all the apps that are available for that. Um, so I'm just gonna clear this and then I'm gonna go to color widgets. You can choose if you want a small, medium or a large one. I'm gonna go with just medium and add that in um, and then it will be there. I have MD clock here, which is actually something you need to pay for, but they also have some cool animated ones or just other types of clocks that you can add here. Um, so yeah, that's also a cool one. Then we also have reminders, which is also one of my favorite ones. So you can add reminders. Um, I'm gonna go to color widgets again and add a small one. And how you edit this one, so as you can see, it's the same as that one. I'm just gonna edit that by clicking on it and then choosing which widget I want. I'm gonna set it to widget number three here and then can I click on done? And um, then we have that there. So then this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna close this app. If I go to my widgets, I have it all there and it looks pretty cool. So yeah, you can add some custom widgets there with apps or you can just use Apple's default widget apps if you want to. Those are all options. Another thing you can also do is customize Safari. Now, I know people have mixed feelings about Safari. Some people are hardcore Chrome users and don't like Safari at all, um, specifically because Chrome has a bunch of extensions that you can use. Um, and then there are people who just use Safari because that I not really care. Me, on the other hand, I just, I really like Safari. I think it's very fast on Mac and um, it syncs across all my devices. Chrome possibly could do that as well, but I just, I've always just preferred Safari for no specific reason. I also use Chrome, you can see it down here. I use it a lot of time for work things and some extensions, which I don't have on Safari. But overall, I just, if I'm just doing regular browsing, I prefer Safari. Okay, that's enough. But okay, for customizing, Safari, I have a few things that I love. First thing is the, just the background. I always change my background. So you just have to go here to settings here in the bottom right. And then you can go ahead and choose this plus button here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the one that I like. So this is the one that I set for my Safari. Um, as you can see, I really like this little <laughs> illustration. Um, you can also go ahead and choose if you want anything showing on your home screen. When you open up Safari, you can turn on or off favorites or shared with you, frequently visited. There are so many things that they have here that you can turn off or on, but I usually have my favorites here just because I use it a lot. I also do have two extensions which I use on my Safari. Um, these are not great extensions, they're just, I like them. Um, so the first one I have here is called Save to Notion. So this just helps you to quickly save pages that you find online to Notion, just because I like Notion a lot. I research a bunch of templates a lot of the time. So this is just a quick little thing that you can add, really nice. And then I have another one here, which is what font. So this is really cool if you're wanting to know which fonts are on a website. Um, so for instance, I'm just gonna go to Apple and say I wanna know what this um, font is, which I probably already know is that SF Pro font that they always use. Yeah, it's a pro text, but then I can just hover over it and immediately see what font they have. Or a website like this that has more going on, I can see exactly what fonts they're using. Um, and it's just a really helpful tool if you're looking for a font on a website and you just don't know what font they used, you can just quickly use what font and then see exactly what they're using. And then the last thing about Safari that I recommend you just take advantage of, this is not really customizing it, but just using advantage of tab groups, just because it's so helpful 
then you can just quickly refer to something that you were looking at in say for customizing your Mac or for graphic design or for whatever you're doing. You just make a tab group and then it's all just there if you're looking for all those websites that you looked for on that specific topic. Another setting you can toggle is going to accessibility, going to display, and then going to pointer here. So here you can go ahead and set the size of your cursor. You can also set the color that you want your cursor to be. So then you can see this is what it looks like. I have my cursor here and it is customized. So that is also something you can do to customize it even more. I however am basic and just like the normal one. So yeah, not that fun for me. Also something that is pretty cool is setting your Memoji as your user's icon. So that looks really cool on your lock screen as well so that you can see your user or your little Memoji there when you're unlocking your Mac. It just looks really cool and it has this cool animation as well, especially if you're typing in the wrong password. Um, so you can also set that. You just need to go to settings here and go here and set it. So just click on edit and then set it to Memoji. Then choose the Memoji that you wanna set up. So this is the one that I'm gonna choose. You can choose the pose. Um, so they have a few poses here that you can choose from that are really nice. With the newer update to Mac OS, which hopefully comes out soon, there will be more poses. These are just the default ones. And then you can go to style and choose the background color. I always just set mine as purple. Click on save and then you will have that and then it will be on your Mac when you open it up. Um, so that's also really cool. Those are just some of the things that you can do just to customize your MacBook and get started with customizing. These are all very basic customizations that you can do to your Mac. There are also th other things that you can do just to add something else. So for instance, you have an app on your Mac which is called Stickies. So this is what it looks like. All you need to do is go open up the Stickies app and then you can just go ahead and click on new note. This is what it will look like. It will pop up like this. You can resize it and make it however big or small you want. You can go ahead and type a to-do list. Um, and what's really cool though, which makes it not as boring as just a simple sticky note, is you can highlight your text, go to font and choose show fonts and then go ahead and choose whichever font you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this font here. You can also make it bigger and you can also change the color of your font if you want to. Here you can see they have just a bunch of things that you can do to edit that. You can also try to change the color of your sticky note as well. And by the end, this is what it will look like and you can just make it look really cool on your Mac. Um, so those are also really cool things that you can do to customize it or just add something else to your home screen. So that's everything I wanna cover in this video on customizing your Mac. If you wanna see another video on this that goes in more depth about like other things that you can do to customize it even more, not just the basic settings and everything, let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely get to that for you guys. Again, in the description box, go there, find all the links or download links to wallpapers or icons or websites, things like that. Go in the description box below and find all of that so that you can see exactly how I did this if you want to get some of the similar results. If this video was helpful for you guys, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot and comment down below any questions you might have. Click on the icon on the screen to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Click on the playlist to see all of my other customization related videos and click on the video to see my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.